Hello and welcome back to Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer podcast. We are so pleased to have player interviews alongside our team-by-team previews. And for this one, we've got a special interview segment with Kristen Edmonds, defender with Kansas City Current. Also, first time on Attacking Third. So Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you guys so much for having me. Happy to be here. We're happy to, to have you sit down and have a little bit of a, a chat with you at the start of the 22 preseason ahead of the 22 regular season back with Kansas City current there was an offseason right doesn't feel like maybe there was <laughs> it was kind of kind of short a little bit but as quick as it was uh, we always like to ask in the in the top of, of the segment here uh, what did the offseason bring you was there an opportunity to maybe do some non-soccer related things I did I took I did take a little bit of time off um having it be a little bit shorter than what we're used to um I decided to kind of spend a lot of time with my family back at home, where I'm from, in New Jersey. Um, I didn't love the weather (laughs) while I was home, Um, but obviously with the pandemic and being away from everybody for so long, I got to see my aunts, uncles, cousins, um, and just spend a lot of quality time with them, which is something I don't often get to do with obviously my busy kind of lifestyle and choice of work but um, <laughs> it was really nice to be able to spend that time at home and then um, in January I headed back down to Orlando which is where I live in the off season and uh, yeah do some training in the sunshine and, and uh, get ready for to head back to KC so it was a good off season for me. Kristen, for uh, an athlete that plays an outdoor sport uh, and you don't love the cold, you you play in Kansas City, there's snow and there's a lot of cold there. But um, this the start of the preseason for Kansas City. You guys get out of the snow and the cold, right? So where do you go? Fill us in a little bit. Where are you now? Where do you guys train? What's kind of like the start of preseason look like for the current? Yeah, so we headed to Kansas City for about a week to get all of our physicals, you know, tie up some loose ends in Kansas city and i um, not gonna lie. I didn't go outside much, <laughs> but uh, we took a flight and now we are chilling in Bradenton, Florida, which is just below Tampa. And the weather has been beautiful for me. It's still a bit chilly. Um, it's been like the fifties and sixties, the first couple of days, all my teammates are making fun of me because I'm in pants, <laughs> long sleeves. I actually asked for gloves the other day. <laughs> Um, but it's just starting to warm up and get into the seventies and I'm sure it'll just get warmer. So, uh, we're, we're living it up down here in Florida. <laughs> okay. So even with the change of, of temperatures and environments and, and scenery, uh, you know, for, for you yourself going into this, this prison, it's going to be, uh, the start of year two for you in terms of, uh, Kansas city current, right. Uh, you're someone who has had a lot of experiences, uh, across different teams in, in the league. Uh, what's uh, what's the feeling like right now for you as you're entering in, in the season two for, for Kansas City Current? How's the team looking and, and feeling uh, right now? Yeah, the vibe here is amazing. Um, it's, for me personally, like something just feels different about coming into this preseason and the way the club is running everything, the way the team has a, a lot of buy-in. Um, we have a lot of new players, a lot of new staff. Um, so there's a, there was a lot of change over from last year to this year, but I'm so excited and it's just, it feels like we have something special going on here. So I'm really looking forward to what's to come and we're going to grind it out here in Florida. Um, we're only on day five and I feel like I've been here for two weeks already. You know, we're putting in the work, got some double sessions going on, but, um, yeah, we're definitely moving in the right direction, and I'm really excited to see what the season brings for us. Before we talk about all of the changes that have happened in the offseason, it's really important to kind of reflect, right? I mean, Kansas City Current was an expansion club last mm-hmm. year in its first season, um, and, and looking at that first season, because you were an integral part of it, from Challenge Cup until the last regular season game at the end of October, how did the team grow throughout 2021? Well, we won a game. (laughs) It took us a while. (laughs) It took us a little while, but, um, you know, we, we started off a little rough challenge cup. You know, I didn't get to play in a couple of those games. (laughs) We won't (laughs) talk about that, (laughs) but, um, yeah, we had a pretty slow start. Um, something that was really great about this team and, our group is that 
off the field and on the field were pretty close. And I think that's pretty abnormal for um, big groups of teams. Like you often might have little clicks or it's not that everybody doesn't get along, but I've never been on a team where we all get along this well. Um, it's pretty amazing to be a part of. Um, so I feel like last year, because we had that, we were able to grow throughout the season, even through those like really tough times that we had. Um, and you, you saw on the field, right? Like we started off <laughs> a little slower than we thought we would have, um, but eventually got that first W and then ended the season pretty strong with that streak going at home, that unbeaten streak. So um, we do have a, a lot of new faces, but I think we can definitely build off of how we ended last year and kind of, and kind of move forward this season. You know, let's let's stay with some of that energy for right now because I, I want to <laughs> maybe talk about that. You know, a, a little bit. The it's it was a roller coaster in twenty twenty one, right? And I'm sure yeah. every single club, you know, can say that to a certain yeah. extent, right? About about last season, but for Kansas City in particular, there was a little bit of a trajectory that took place, at least on, on the pitch, in mm -hmm. terms of uh, the, the soccer that we're talking about right now, right? You mentioning the the home undefeated streak the fact that the team was kind of playing spoiler a little bit at the end against other kind yeah. of playoff pushing teams, yeah. right? It was, it was a fun uh, energy to sort of watch yeah. and for us to, to, to cover. So sort of looking at that, right. Looking at that, that 2021, what strides would you say the teams are, that the team is looking to, to make this season? Um, well, if you look off the field, right. Look at our fan base. We're playing in a different stadium this year. We have new branding. <laughs> um there's a lot that has kind of pushed us forward off the field um and then on the field you know we're adding pieces to the puzzle that can make us great which is amazing especially for a player like me who's been in the league for a while um to be a part of something that's moving forward and not kind of standing still or like moving backwards a little bit um is like really cool. And I just, I feel like really lucky to be a part of it and to still be able to contribute. Um, but I'm, I think it's just gonna, everybody's just gonna have to kind of like wait and see how we show up. But I can tell you that um, we are going to, going to be a force to be reckoned with this season. And um, yeah, we're not, we're not giving anything away, but uh, it should be exciting for the fans to watch this year, for sure. If it's anything like the end of the 2021 season, fans <laughs> are and, and opponents, they're in for a tough 2022 yeah. opponents, right? It's, you yeah. guys were really tough to play against. And, and you just right. mentioned all of the different changes that happened. I mean, across the league, this off season was nuts, movement everywhere, but with mm -hmm. the current specifically, some new front office people, Cammy Levin stepping yeah. in as, as GM, a new head coach and on the field, some big additives acquired some new teammates in, in midfielder Sam U.S. forward Lynn Williams so what can these changes and these personnel add to uh, Kansas City and, and like this caliber of player on the field what can that do for Kansas City current um well first of all having Cammy here is awesome because my first year playing for Orlando she was my teammate <laughs> nice. um so that's it's really awesome to have Cammy here um and just to know like what she went through in the league and now she's here with this club and this club is making strides and kind of setting the bar. So to see her go from then to now is, is cool for me to see. And I'm, I'm very happy and grateful that she's with us. Um, and then when you talk about the other pieces, uh, the new players that we have coming in, you know, their experience they they know how to win They're champions they're competitors. Um, so bringing that to this club and to this team and this environment will only make everyone else better and kind of step our game up and, and want to be a part of what they already know um, is, is coming. So yeah, we're pretty pumped to have our new teammates on board <laughs> to say the least, but um, yeah, they definitely add quality and experience and um, we're excited to have them with us this season. Nice. I love that along with like the players you also mentioned, like dropped like some administrative hires, right? Former player and Cam Cammy Levin yeah. coming to the team. But there was like other additions as well. And that, you know, Matt Potter coming in as, as head coach for, for KC Current. So how has it been in these sort of early days of, of preseason working alongside Potter? And uh, uh, what do you feel that he's uh, bringing to the team this year? 
Yeah, I'm really excited that Matt's here. Um, obviously, he came from working with the U.S. national team. Um, so to bring that experience here, um, obviously, that's an organization that knows how to win as well. <laughs> um, but, you know, having him here, our preseason so far has been amazing. It's hard. It's tough. I'm tired every day. <laughs> After every session, I walk on the field and I'm like, man, I need a nap. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, he's great. I feel like I'm still um, able to learn so much from him. In our meetings, I take something away from all of them. At training, I feel like I'm being pushed, um, which, you know, for playing for so long, to be able to still feel like I can still learn bits and pieces of the, of the game. His detail um, is just something that I can appreciate. Um, being like such a student of the game. So, and he's done a really good job of getting us all to buy in, um, to be able to, to be, to be great really. So, um, yeah, he's so far so good. We're, you know, we're a weekend. <laughs> um, he's got some tough decisions to make. Um, but yeah, no, he's great. And I think he's uh, going to be such a good leader for this group. For you, you've been in the league, you've been on different teams and you've made your mark as a player, as, as a solid player in this league. But when you reflect on your skills personally and your career and where you are in your soccer career, and you look just at the 2022 season, what are some personal goals you're setting for yourself? Honestly, like the biggest goal for me is to win a championship. <laughs> Um, I feel like my career, I've done everything and more that I personally have wanted to do. Um, some things that I didn't even know that I would get to do. Um, but there's there's just that one thing missing, right? That that championship season. I have won overseas. I won when I played in Iceland. We won the league. But playing here in my own country, um, in front of my friends and family, it would be amazing to get to get that championship. But as the season goes on, you know, I just want to continue to grow as a player. Um, I've already been moved to a couple different positions. <laughs> um, so still being able to, you know, have that versatility and, and still learn um, the details of, of each position and get better at ones that I may not be so comfortable in <laughs> um, will be awesome. And then um, obviously when I'm done playing, I will get into the youth game a little bit. So to be able to bring all the knowledge that I have from here into that will be amazing as well. But um, yeah, as long as I, I just want to continue to progress, continue to move forward, to continue, continue to get better um, on the field. And then also like step up my leadership skills as well. You know, I'm not the most outspoken spoken person. Um, I'm more of a lead by example kind of, kind of girl, but you know, to get out of my comfort zone a little bit, we have a lot of young players and kind of, maybe take them under my wing a bit and, uh, and show them the ropes, if you will. But um, yeah, just to continue to grow and, and uh, become a better person and player overall. Oh, I love that. So, I, okay. <laughs> I have to ask, you've been moved around in different positions and, <laughs> yeah. and we won't let this get back to coach, but what's your favorite position to play defense, midfield, center of the pitch on the flanks? Yeah. It's funny because I used to have an answer to that and it used to be, um, I really enjoyed playing in the 10, you know, a little bit ago. Um, but outside back has always been a favorite of mine. Um, but then I also like, sometimes I miss that like attacking aspect of like scoring goals all the time. You know what I mean? Um, but now somebody asked me that the other day and my answer was actually anywhere on the field. I just want to be an impact player, contribute and wherever I am needed and can help the team the most is, is where my favorite position will be. <laughs> well, I love that answer. I know like introducing you at the top of the episode talking about defender, but don't get it twisted. Edmonds can play anywhere, back anyway. line, front, front line, middle third, where, wherever yeah, you're just, slotting Don't put me in the goal. 
Don't put yeah. me in the goal. They get <laughs> no, the goalkeeper. That's a one position. <laughs> no goalkeeper. That's the one position you're here to hear exactly, first. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but so, I want to. You also chatted a little bit uh, just now, not, not with the personal goals where you want to. Uh, you know, see yourself playing, which is anywhere. But one of the goals is you want that championship. You're chasing rings. I love that. I love to hear that from players. Uh, but, you know, as we enter this 2022 season, it's going to look a little bit different in terms of the landscape of clubs, right? We're going from yeah. uh, we're going from 10 clubs to not just 11, but 12 clubs mm -hmm. uh, in the league. And you're not unfamiliar with it, with expansion in this league. So for this season, how do you uh, how do you see the the league competition changing? Maybe with twelve teams versus uh, you know ten moving forward. Um, I mean, I think our league in general has always been really competitive. You know, you have team one playing team twelve, you're going to get a game. Anybody can win that one, um, and that, that's not like that in every league around the world. Um, so I think that's something special that the NWSL has and brings to the table, and just to be able to say that we're expanding and we're going to continue to expand. It's just going to be great for the women's game and this league in particular. Um, but I'm excited that more teams are coming in, you know, it's playing the same team three times is tough. Like it's difficult um, because you really get to know like little nuances and details of, of the teams and the players that you face. Um, so being able to, to play more teams, some of the same people, but um more teams and then you get to travel a little bit more like I'm yeah. excited to go to Cali <laughs> <laughs> yeah we learned you like the warmer weather so this I is actually great for you sending you <laughs> yeah. to Southern California for some competition <laughs> exactly I'm like let's go San Diego can't wait to play you guys <laughs> um but yeah no I'm super excited that that the league's expanding and um I have I have friends on almost every team so uh it'll be nice to kind of kind of catch up when we're out there but also They'll be able to compete and um, and enjoy the game all over the state. So that'll be fun. And we're celebrating the expansion sides because growing this league is always necessary, but with growing the league comes um, some other expansion. And, and this year, an attacking third of the last few weeks there is a very historic moment right before preseason started the league and the NWSL players association ratified its very first CBA, which is just huge in this league. And Sandra yeah. and I, we've been celebrating it. We've been celebrating it with the players that we've been talking to. So uh, this is huge. And, and for you as a player who's been in the NWSL since 2014, a number of different teams across the leagues, um, what are your initial thoughts on this? I mean, when you found out about it the night before preseason and, and everything. So CBA it's here. Yeah, finally. I mean, this is, this has been uh, in the making for a long time, but I mean, it's amazing that it finally got settled and just for the women's game, it's massive. I mean, we've been fighting for so much for so long. Like when I came into the league, <laughs> I tell people stories about like things that we had and didn't have. And they're kind of like, what you're a professional athlete. But um, yeah, it's, it's honestly like massive and it's like, you can like finally take a deep breath. And obviously like there's still a lot to do and we have some forward progress to make, but to be able to start here where our CBA is at and have that in place for this season. Um, it's amazing to be able to say for me personally, that I helped grow the game and move the game forward. And now these, this next generation coming in, we'll be able to reap the benefits of all the hard work and the groundwork that um, players in my generation have kind of laid out. Um, but also I get to enjoy it a little bit because I'm still playing. <laughs> yes. um, so yeah, it's huge. It's massive. And to be honest, like I can't wait to see where things go from here. Um, you obviously in the news, there's like big contracts being signed and, and all of that stuff, but we, didn't always have the opportunity to do that. You know, you had professional athletes having two or three jobs in the off season or having a job on the side during season, which is already hard. Um, but now, you know, to be able to make a living doing the sport that we love and just being able to enjoy it um, is huge. And then all the other little things that are in the CBA as well. Um, it's just massive for the women's game. And um, yeah, I'm thrilled that, that it got done and even more thrilled to be a part of that process and uh, help pave the way. 
it was so uh, it was really just so exciting to just start like bearing witness to that like literally the evening before mm -hmm. preseason was you know slated to start and as we started to sort of see the, the news dropping uh primarily coming out from, you know, the, the players association and their Twitter handle or, or socials. Uh, it was highlighting a lot of different aspects, right. Of, of this actual CBA, but something that really resonated, I think for a lot of us that were looking at that was that there are a lot of gains, right. A lot of wins within this CBA that we could probably tie directly to player experiences, right. Yeah. Within, uh, within the league. So in terms of maybe just thinking of some of those, like, bigger bullet points right mm -hmm. well what is what is a part of uh, this current cba that maybe stands out to you or resonates with you on a, on a personal level i think the biggest one and i'm sure most people say this is just the pay <laughs> yeah, yeah. um when i first came into the league i mean i played overseas for two seasons and then came in here so i haven't been in the end of cell since it started but i came in in year two and I think when I came in, I want to say the league minimum was seven thousand dollars. Like, no. How do you live off of that? Um, so that for me, like that stands out the most. Um, that now our minimum is now thirty five, um, which still isn't enough, but <laughs> it's a good place to be. Um, but yeah, that for me is is the biggest thing. And then other things that are in our CBA are like the quality of field and facilities um you know we didn't always have locker rooms and you know you're showing up to feel to fields in your gear and with backpacks and um it sounds like I may be being a bit high maintenance <laughs> oh. but um as a professional athlete you know you want to feel like a pro feel like the only thing you have to worry about is going on the field and performing um, and going home and taking care of your body to be able to perform that next day. Um, so to be able to have these things in place, not playing on baseball fields, things like that, um, is huge because all that stuff affects your body. It affects the game. <laughs> it affects, you know, your longevity and, uh, obviously the sport as a whole. So there's a lot of things that happen, but yeah, I would say those, those two or three things are probably the biggest that stand out to me. Um, but there's, there's just so much that, that we've gained having the CBA in place that, um, you know, you won't be able to see it all physically, but it, it definitely is helping us a ton and, and only going to get the game to grow and move forward, which is awesome. Look, there's nothing high maintenance <laughs> about that. No, oh, not there at needs all. Not to a be a standard. Way. Yeah, not a single yeah. of that was yeah. high was uh, was high maintenance. It's absolutely yeah. we're gonna trans we're gonna transform that. Right? We're gonna trans <laughs> it's not high maintenance. It's standards. Yeah. It's standards, right? That we're yeah. celebrating everywhere, yeah. and including here on attacking third. Uh, you know, when, whenever we do these uh, player interviews. Uh, alongside these previews that we've been doing, we've been closing, trying to close them out with maybe something a little bit fun. And a big topic that has come up along uh, these interviews is the concept of like with preseason, like getting back into a routine, right? Getting back into a rhythm. So something that we've been asking alongside of getting into like a routine and a rhythm for players is, is A, it's a two-parter. So like A, are you a coffee drinker? And B, what is typically like your P, like your, your like pre or post or training scrimmage uh, go-to beverage so I actually don't drink coffee at all yes. <laughs> I'm seeing no I, coffee. I don't like the taste of coffee and it's actually hilarious that you asked me that because um I did, just did a food sensitivity test and I have sensitivity to coffee <laughs> nice oh, oh, so wow. there's a scientific um, reason one cup okay. of coffee one time and Never again. <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I'm a massive tea drinker. I love tea. Mm. So that's my go-to. So if anybody's like, you want to grab a cup of coffee? I'm like, sure. And then I go up and order tea. Um, so oh, that's man. my thing. But um, yeah, after games and trainings, you know, it's just, I crave a little, um, a little caffeine, you know, a little, like a little, a little taste of Sprite or some sort of soda. Mm. Yeah. We get this thing called game stomach and it just kind of like settles yep. everything down. Um, obviously we have like all of our hydration drinks from our nutritionist and all that good stuff. You know, you get your protein in, but especially after a long game, um, when you know, you just have no energy, you're dead. You just want to go home, hit your bed, 
Um, a little bit of soda is, is my go-to, but for preseason, I'm going to stay as hydrated as possible, water, our um, hydration tablets, all that good stuff. But when it comes to playing, you know, those little mini cans. Yes. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. are my go-to. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, it's, it's the, like, it's the don't feel guilty for drinking this. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's like, you know what? It's like, I'm not going to feel bad for drinking this baby soda. It's a baby. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah, 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 exactly. Like, you can feel bad about drinking a little baby pop. It's fine. It's yes. fine. I, yes. I love but, that though. Uh, yeah. We've had some, some players like dive in and say like, oh, I love this. I love that. We had players say like, uh, I drink black coffee and like when we're getting players who are like actually I don't drink coffee it makes my non-coffee heart also sore I'm all yes I, also, I love I'm it. also a big fan of tea I I, I love it um, that's my go-to um as well so uh I, we always like to, to thank our listeners for joining us towards the end of these episodes so thank you everyone for joining us thank you Kristen for joining us on the show good luck in 2022 with the upcoming season everybody you can follow us on twitter at attacking third we're on apple podcast spotify stitcher anywhere you listen to your podcast shows you can leave us a five-star review on spotify and we're also available as video subscribe to us on youtube is youtube.com slash attacking third And we'll be back with more ahead of the 2022 NWSL season. For Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Kristen Edmonds, this was Attacking Third.